Hi everyone. I was hoping to go live, but I can't find that feature on my Facebook page. <laughs> so you're getting, to, you're getting a recording. Sorry for that. But we can still continue to interact after that. My, man, my name is Mandy Young. I am a psychotherapist and I've worked quite a journey with adults and children towards uh, good relationships with themselves and with those that they really care about. I've worked with two different medical teams, one helping amputees rehabilitate back into life and the other with cancer patients, but specifically with the Hurt to Hope program and divorce adjustment work. I was the first person to bring this program into Africa after it had been very well researched over many years in the States. And I have been a speaker on the topic. Uh, it's been written about in magazines, even a TV documentary for children. So I have a lot of experience in this area. What I'd like to share with you today is that children and teens um, experience divorce from a different perspective, depending on their age. Children who are just preschool, they tend to think, oh, well, this is just inevitable. This is the way life goes. When they get to school, they start to realize that maybe their families are a little bit different and starting to evaluate that. Still very family focused. When they get to those middle childhood years, between seven to 11, they realize that um, their parents made a choice and things could have been different. But they don't have that cognitive ability of teenagers to hold things in abeyance, you know, that this is dad's reality, this is mom's reality, and the divorce was maybe somewhere in between, and, you know, they don't have any kind of capacity to do that. So they're really angry. They're really angry at this choice that's impacted their lives. They're also at the stage where they are um, choosing a role model. So if they're boys, they're really kind of looking for more time with their dads. If they're girls, looking for more time with their moms. I'm really going through this very briefly because we can get into it in a little bit more detail on a more one-to-one -one basis or on a group webinar or something like that. What I really wanted to share too is that um, teens, when they get to that age, they're now looking for a new identity. At the same time as parents are looking for a different, new, evolved parent, having uh, come out of a, a divorce or a separation, looking for a new, a new person within themselves. So it's quite confusing for teenagers. And at this stage, brains are much more important than parents. And they're developing their value systems. It's also quite confusing for them when they're dating for the first time and their parents are also dating. So it's a, a kind of confusing muddle of things that go on when, in those teenage years. <clears throat> and surprisingly enough, the people that divorce and separation most impact are those in their late teens, early 20s. It's because they had counted on certain things being a given long term, and now they aren't. They've come apart. And they right at the beginning of making some very long-term decisions about careers, about relationships. So this is a very significant happening for them in their lives. But you know, um, most theorists kind of say that children rework the whole divorce situation at different stages of their development. So even when they are married, they kind of rework that. Even when they have their first child, they rework that. I'm sorry, that's my dog in the background. <laughs> I'm not going to stop. Otherwise, I've got to start all over again. But she's making a bit of a racket. She's like a child. You know, as soon as I begin to talk to other people, she wants some attention. So, sorry about that. So, I wanted to just tell you today some of the factors that you can look out for when your child is not coping or not behave, not, um, not coping, not dealing with things, and they need a little bit of support. So I broke those down actually into 13 factors. Now don't take each of one of them as an isolated factor and they go, ah. I rather look at it as um, an integrated system. When, when, when kind of few things are looking um, a little bit like your child is not coping, pay attention. So one of them is when there's a change in sleeping, when they're really struggling to go to sleep at night and they wake up really early not just now and again, but kind of consistently. And maybe to go along with sleeping, 
uh, when they're scared of the dark at night, when they're having nightmares, um, night terrors, those kinds of things. Sometimes they're not sleeping, um, not, sorry, not coping. The other thing is when there's some bedwetting, that often is a way of kind of weighing out your feelings because you're not able to really express them um, in the way you would like to. The other thing you could look out for is excessive reading or excessive TV watching, kind of wanting to escape. And maybe along with that, when your child is a lot in a, in a fantasy world or always daydreaming, maybe sometimes when they are playing on their own a lot with imaginary friends, sometimes that's just an age thing, but sometimes when it goes along with some of the, these other factors, it might be an indication that your child is really needing to talk. There's a lot of stuff going on inside and they're not quite know how to process that. The other thing is um, maybe obsessive or compulsive eating. They, they can't stop eating. Another thing is really excessive outrageous outbursts of anger. It's often an indication they are not coping very well. Lying or stealing. That might sound really uh, traumatic, but often it's just a way of trying to get attention. Running away, obviously that definitely gets your attention. Let's see what else I've got here. If they start to have headaches, stomach aches, nausea, uh, pay attention to that. If it's not um, physically related, they're not actually physically sick with colds or flus or anything like that. And then just when there's sometimes a whole lot of inapathy. They really have no energy, they don't want to do things, they actually look really quite depressed. So those are the um, a little bit of information I wanted to share with you. I know that you all are very caring parents and you want to do the best by your children. So having these alarm bells go off or not, uh, ah, let's give up, what do we do? It's more of a and a trigger to say some action needs to be taken. So one of the things I wanted to help you along the way is to go to my website livewithmandyyoung.com. There are various things on there but look under healthy body, mind and soul for the hurt to hope area. Um, I provided a couple of assessment tools or a request for some assessment tools so that you could go a little bit more in depth into answering some questions just to see how your child is or isn't doing. And then I will take a look at those for you and give you some feedback. I'll do that for free. So that's what I'm offering you today. I'm going to make this a weekly thing because I really want to give as much support to children and parents going through this situation as possible. So look out for me next Tuesday at quarter past six or at half past six. Really looking forward to talk to you again. And once again, go to my website, livewithmandyyoung.com, all one word. Look for the Hurt to Hope section and click on the tab that says assessment. Okay, assessment for your child. Let's uh, give them the most support that we can because often in a separation or divorce situation, depending on how you handle it, you can develop very mature, well-adjusted um, children. It just depends on how you manage it, what kind of support that they get, what kind of support that you get. Um, because to be able to be a emotionally available parent, you need to be um, surrounded by nurturing, caring people and doing your own emotional processing at this very hectic time as well. Okay, I'm going to leave you now and look forward to seeing you again next week. But please comment on my Facebook, like my Facebook on the Hurt to Hope post and please go to my website livewithmandyyoung.com and look for that Hurt to Hope section. Bye for now.